Welcome back to Let the Quran Speak. Now we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. And if you have a question yourself, you can visit our website, www.quranspeaks.com. Okay, Brother Shabir, the first question is regarding the story of Noah in the Quran, where he's ordered by God to build an ark and put two of every animal within uh, the ark with him. And the questioner is asking, how is this to be understood given that there were thousands of animals around, or he's, he's written millions? So he wants to know, how is it possible for Noah to have put all those animals within the ark? It should be understood within the context. When, when, when a command comes from God, as it comes from anyone, uh, somebody tells you to do something, it, th there is a certain context uh, uh, that, that is known, okay. uh, that is understood, and you do it within that context. So when, when God says to Noah, take uh, two of every animal, there is a certain situation. The animals are there, it, you know, Noah can see what the animals are, and he just takes two of each that he intends to, to preserve, probably mm -hmm. the animals that he himself needs. Not necessarily that he's trying to do God's work for him to make sure that he preserves all of the species, because God can preserve what he wants uh, and, and rebuild or remake what he, what he wants. So but he's probably taking livestock then? He's probably taking livestock. He's taking the animals that, uh, for whatever reason, within his ambit, within his scope of, of operations, he thinks is, uh, is reasonable to take. Uh, so when we see giraffes and all that in, in the ark, in pictures of the ark, that's probably not accurate. Well, we don't know if, <laughs> what animals uh, existed at the time, uh, at his time, and, and what he would have taken. So mm. uh, some depictions obviously are going to be made using uh, familiar objects, uh, including animals that we know of. Uh, but uh, we shouldn't pretend that, that we know precisely which animals he took. All right, okay. Uh, the next question, is it true that music is haram? And is there anywhere in the Quran where it states that music and dancing is haram? So those are two questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, about music in particular, there is nothing in the Quran that specifically speaks about music. Uh, Surah 31 in the Quran, Surah Luqman, uh, does speak about people uh, using lahu al-hadith, which uh, might be translated as idle speech, uh, in, in order to turn people away from the remembrance of, of God and from the divine revelation, the Quran itself. Um, and some people use that as an argument that, see, uh, music is that, and so it should be avoided. But uh, one should recognize that what this was referring to initially was somebody coming up and using some uh, poetic recitations to draw people away from the Quran. It's not like you can have your Quran and also have this. It's either, th either this or that. Mm. So yes, we will say anything that draws us away from the Quran in that uh, divisive sense uh, definitely would be uh, forbidden for Muslims. But uh, if uh, you can have your Quran and also have some music that you enjoy on the side, then that, that verse does not speak to that situation. Now we have to consider whether in, in fact this music has anything that prohibits it. In, in, in the Islamic um, uh, jurisprudence, it is taken as a guiding principle that something has to be specifically ruled prohibited. Uh, otherwise, it is to be assumed that it is permissible. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we've already seen that there's nothing in the Quran that rules against music. Is, so there, is anything there anything in the hadith? In the hadith reported from the Prophet, peace be upon him. There are some reports, but uh, they, they're either not very clear in, in, in decisively ruling out music, or uh, they may be weak, which means that they're not uh, authentically attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In terms of not clear, there is a hadith which is mentioned in Bukhari saying that a time will come when the ma'azif will be, will be destroyed. Um, well, the ma'azif, uh, the uh, rather, that there's a time that will come that people will be occupied with the ma'azif. Ma and uh, What the, is that? So ma'azif could mean any, any musical instrument. Uh, so if this hadith is used to rule out all musical instruments, look what happens. That it, it is known from other authentic narratives that the daf, a certain type of drum, is permissible. And that is a musical instrument. So it cannot be used. So we can say that this is not entirely clear. And the original uh, presumption is that it is permissible. So unfortunately, that's all the time we have, Brother Shabir. We won't get to get we won't get to discuss the dancing question, but we'll do that in another show. Thank you. Okay, sure, You're welcome. And we'd like to hear from you. Please visit our website www.quranspeaks.com. Send us your comments, your suggestions, and of course your donations. I'm Sophia Ali. For all of us here at Let the Quran Speak, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.